Hello, I'm Julian with 3D Chimera. Today I'll be showing you how to apply a 3D texture to your 3D print. The model I'll be using today is the insole that you see here. It's going to be a, a smooth surface uh, that I want to add some sort of texture to. I will be using Blender, which is an animation software free to download. And I'll show two different methods in applying textures either to this whole top surface or in different zones you can paint on. Alright, so I have Blender open up here, uh, opening up a general project. You'll start out with the cube and camera and all that. Those aren't required, so I'll delete them. And then I want to import the STL file that I have here. So the first step, uh, for the first method I will be using would be to uh, isolate that top surface, apply texture to it, and using another software like Ants of Space Claim, you can stitch them back together. Uh, I find this is one of the better methods for high resolution textures as it allows you to apply a lot more computation power to just that top surface instead of trying to render out the entire STL. So I'll be importing the STL for the just the top. So I'll have the import of the insole split top. You have to zoom in, zoom out a little bit. Um, Blender will default STL default units to uh, meters. So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, as long as you don't change the scale of anything, then all your dimensions should be the same as well. All right, so you can see this is kind of a single sided surface of just the top surface. All right, we will also want to be using a plane and this will be used later to apply scaling to the texture. Um, so I'll be adding a mesh, add a plane. So that is there in the origin, it's very small. I'm gonna go over to add plane, make this probably 2000 meters. So makes that very large. Uh, we will be playing around with this a little bit more. Um, so the scale right now doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I'll just hide this for now. By clicking tab, you can enter into edit mode. Oh, I'll have to have the object selected here. You can see it's a pretty fine mesh. Um, we may want to subdivide this a little bit, but I think for starting, we should be OK. So I'm going to go back to object mode. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is apply a modifier. And the first modifier is going to be this is wrench icon here. I'm going to click on the Displace modifier. Now, Blender has a lot of different texturing tools um, for animation specifically, but a lot of them will just be applying color or um, normal mapping to the object. Uh, however, when you go to export that into a language that 3D printers speak, um, a lot of that information is lost. So what we actually want to do is to deform the STL mesh that we have here to apply the texture so it will show up in the 3D print. So by doing that I will be using a displacement modifier and I want to click on new texture. So I'll click on new texture and what that does is it adds a texture in the uh, the texture tab. I'm going to open up where I have a couple different textures already. Um, now, a lot of these could be free to download, um, but what we're really looking for are either height maps or displacement maps. Um, so I'm going to use a roofing tiles displacement map first. Um, and because this is one of the modifiers, we can change this texture uh, however we see fit later on. All right, so I'm going to open that texture. And you can see that um, this is not quite the image that we're looking for. Um, I'm going to go back and edit some things here in the displacement modifier. Um, two key things here, strength will change the height up and down of the texture and the mid-level will shift up and down what um, basically it tells the software where zero is with respects to um, white going up or down or black going up or down. You can also change the direction of the texture is being applied in. It can be XYZ normal. 
Um, but what we want to do here is actually apply the texture coordinates to the object. And the object I'm picking is that plane we made before. And what this allows me to do is very um, simply apply a texture to by changing the size of that plane. So I'm going to make sure the plane is selected and click scale. I'm going to grab anywhere on the plane. And you can see as I'm dragging this bigger or smaller, it's actually affecting the texture. So the texture is a little bit small, so I got to make that plane quite large. Um, and now you can see that by scaling the plane up and down, I'm actually affecting the texture as well. You can also affect where that is here. Now I'm doing it by the screen. We we'll probably want to be rotating it in Z only. Yeah, so you can you can rotate the texture, you can scale textures, and this is all being applied to the plane that we built before. So I'm going to hide that plane again, click on the insole, and I can change the height of the texture. So here I've got some like roofing tiles. But you can still see it's a little it's still a little rough. Now there are two methods to increase the resolution of our textures. Um, one would be to go into our edit mode and actually add more t triangles to this section. Um, the other way, which I'll show you, is through uh, another displacement um, modifier. So I'm going to go into modifier and then subdivision surface. So this may be a little computational heavy, but what this is going to do is um, it's going to apply an after effect. So you can see um, just by rendering two levels of smoothing, um, we can make that texture a lot smoother as well. All right, so we, let's say I only want to make the texture pop up in Z. Now that's going to affect all that there. All right. Now I can change the texture to a new one. Let's say I want it to look like um, coral. And by changing this, it should auto uh, update. Now, one thing you can do is to um, disable the subdivision surface here while we are working with the, um, the rough texture just so we get everything nice and ordered. All right, so you can see that now we've got some coral texture on this. I think that looks pretty good. And by changing these sliders, all I'm doing is clicking and uh, dragging my mouse left or right. And, but you can see that it actually changes the STL and not just applies a color to it. And so this is going to be the method and how we can apply textures to 3D printing. So from here, um, we can show the smoothing. That looks nice and smooth here. And then we can export it. Now I want to make sure that I only have the, the insole selected. And then under our export options, I also want to make sure that I only have selected um, turned on. And I'm going to name this uh, insole coral. I'm going to export that. And if I did not have the selection only, then it would also have that plane, which is quite large. Um, you could always delete that afterward, but I find it's easier not to include it to begin with. All right, so I'm going to navigate over there to find my coral texture. And so now you can see that the STL itself has a coral texture built into it. And so that was method one in applying the texture. Now you can see one, one reason you, you may want not want to do this one is because the texture is going to be applied to the whole body. Um, instead, what if we didn't want to have texture up here on the outside of the heel cup? Um, and we really only want a texture maybe here on the heel and maybe uh, at the balls of your feet here. So, um, how would we do that? So that would be a slightly different method. I'm going to start a new project. 
I'm gonna delete the camera and all that. And what I'm gonna do here is import the whole shoe. And so that's gonna be this whole left insole here, import. All right, so this is the entire STL. This is gonna be the watertight model. And I, while I could 3D print this, I wanna add a texture to it. So um, in order to do that, we're going to make use of what are called vector groups. Uh, in a similar way that we applied the texture to the whole model in the last example, um, we're going to apply that texture only to certain vector groups. And so I know I'll need that plane again, so I'm going to add mesh plane. I'll start at maybe 2000, but I will need to make that much bigger later. And I'm going to edit mode. And then while everything is selected, you could also press A to select all. I want to select every single of these vertices. Um, all right, so to make a new vertex group, we're going to go to this green triangle here. We're going to go to vertex group here and click add. Now, I want to first initialize everything by making the strength of whatever modifier we're going to apply to this, zero. So that means the entire shoe is going to have a strength of zero. And then the method after that is going to be applying texture uh, to only the areas that we want to paint. Uh, and with that, we'll be having our was it one. So I'm going to apply texture weight of zero. And then I'm going to assign that. I'm going to deselect. And then we're going to push C to grab the paint icon. All right, so now I'm going to paint the areas that I want to apply texture in. So like I said, I only want to kind of do the heel section and maybe a little bit of the front section so that everywhere I don't paint is still going to be smooth, um, but there will be texture in the areas that I have here. All right, so then here I'm going to Press escape to get out of paint mode. I'm going to apply a vector weight of one to these vectors. Okay. Now we can go back to um, our object mode. Now it doesn't look like we did a lot of anything here, um, but we did save it here to the vertex group. So um, just to summarize, we need to initialize everything to zero first and then apply a vector weight of one to the areas we want to apply the texture to. Right, and just to, like we did in the similar in the previous example, we're gonna apply a displacement map. Um, but what's different here is we're gonna select the vertex group that I have grabbed there. So now you can see our default texture of uh, up or down here is going to have uh, just in the areas that we want to apply those textures. Okay. I'm going to apply a texture apply that to the plane and just like before we can add a strength up or down and then I want to apply um, let's go with the coral texture again all right so now this is going to be tied to the size of this plane I'm going to grab the plane scale it up this go up quite a bit but uh, then we're going to grab kind of uh, whatever size looks good here. Hide that plane, grab that insole texture there. All right, so now you can see I'm only applying the texture to the areas that I had painted. And this displacement map also, we can make that only in Z so that it's, um, it's only just popping upward instead of kind of at a weird angle. Uh, and then we can also play around with the strength here. So that looks pretty good. And then in a similar way, um, we're going to want to export the, just the sole. Um, we can also add the subdivision surface as well. All right. 
So that's nice and smooth. Um, I recommend not going above three or so. Uh, it is pretty computationally intense. Um, and the resulting STL at the end is gonna be a couple million triangles uh, if you do that. So you may have to decimate it in a post process later. Um, but uh, the STL that is here looks good. Coral, and I only wanna grab this selection here. Okay, so that um, was a quick tutorial here on how two different methods and applying 3D textures uh, using Blender. And we can pull this up here in the other software. So you can see that it uh, only applied the texture in the areas that uh, were interested to this application. All right, thanks for watching.